Well, welcome to Live Lessons, everyone. We're so glad that you're here with us. It's kind of a rainy night here in Nashville, uh, but we're so glad that you're with us. If you're uh, uh, able to, go ahead and type in where you're from. It's always uh, fun for me to see that while y'all are doing that. Oh, gosh, look at them. Rochester, Minnesota, Manhattan. I uh, saw some Texas go by. Oh, now they're, now they're coming. Uh, Canada, Kansas. Well, welcome, everybody. The Bronx, uh, Boise, Idaho. Great. Man, up uh, Alberta, I saw that one pass as well. Ottawa. They're going by so fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are so glad to have with us uh, Jack Pearson. Uh, Jack, so thankful that you are here with us. Glad you that brother. you're here. Uh, it's going to be a great night. We're going to be talking about uh, blues guitar. We'll probably be talking about slide along the way, and we'll also be uh, probably playing a little jazz along the way too, maybe just to, just to throw it in there as well. Hard to get by without it. <laughs> it's hard to get by without it. That's true. That's true. Um, to get us started off, we're going to have some giveaways a little bit later on in the lesson. If you want to be a part of that, you need to log in to us at uh, uh, ustream.tv. And uh, you will be logged in. Once we see your name in the chat, then you will be uh, uh, able to do music, music to <laughs> little music to, music to do by announcements by. Uh, <laughs> and you'll be able to log in, and then we'll be able to send out some... Uh, giveaway stuff to you if you win that so welcome everybody we're at about uh, oh I don't know 260 or so people uh, so it's glad I'm glad that you guys are here let's go ahead and get started off um, we'll do that let's say we had messed around with a little uh, little groove in A so that seems like a good place to start yeah and uh... <laughs> Tell it already. 
I um, can tell. I can just tell. I can just feel it in my bones that it's going to be a good I can night. Hear it in my ear. <laughs> uh, as uh, you guys have questions out there, uh, feel free to ask them. We'll try and get to as many of them as we uh, can as we're uh, getting started here. Wow, Jack, you have been with us several times over the years. Yeah, we always have a good time. It is, it is an honor to have you back here with us. Honor to be here. Um, how'd you get started playing guitar? Uh, my oldest brother got me started, and we used to play that song every weekend. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, every Sunday. My brother-in-law Gary would sing, mm -hmm. and my nephews would play drums, and uh, me and Stanley would play guitar. And uh, you're from Nashville? From I was Nashville? born in Nashville, yep. but we moved to Murfreesboro when I was young, mm -hmm. so I grew up in Murfreesboro. Now, uh, uh, so... But he was really into rockabilly and all that stuff, you know. So you still play? Uh, no, he passed away about oh, four I'm years so ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so yeah. sorry. Um, wow. So, you, so you've been playing since about when did you start? I've been playing 40 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Uh, and along the way, you, uh, you have played so many great things. I was kind of refreshing my memory on all the great things you've played with over the years. You yeah. played with Vince Gill. I see you playing with Vince Gill all the time. We uh, do something together every once in a while. He, <laughs> he'll call me up, come over and do this and do that. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then you were with uh, Allman Brothers for a few years. Yeah. When, what years were those? Well, I first played with them in 93, mm -hmm. and then uh, I played with Greg after that in his solo band, mm -hmm. and then they asked me to join the Allman Brothers in 97. Okay. And then uh, I left in uh, the spring of 1999. Mm -hmm. uh, I was having tinnitus really bad in my ears, so yeah. I had to quit touring for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, pretty loud on the stage, I would imagine. Very loud, yeah. 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 Uh, is that, t we, have, we have lots of questions about that from time to time, tinnitus. Is that something that uh, you found some relief in what? over the years? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're still trying to come up with new things to deal with it, but yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I still have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard hard to sleep sometimes. Yeah, yeah. and and loud noises are that painful. aggravates it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, certain frequencies actually cause physical pain mm -hmm. because the nerves, I guess, are. You know, they've got different theories about it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Moral of that story is watch, watch your volume of your ears. Yeah, I I have a small amp here and I'm trying to play like acoustic level. So it it uh, is very quiet in here. Yeah. A, a a marked difference from when Johnny Highland is here in the yeah. studio. <laughs> I mean, I used to. Well, I still like to play loud, you know. I'll, uh, and sometimes I have to, but I always wear earplugs now. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, you kind of get off on the volume, mm -hmm. the vibrations and everything. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I can't do any more damage to my ears, I hope. So. Yeah, yeah. Got to take care of your ears. You only get one yep. set. That's right. And they got to last you a long time. Uh, already having questions come in. Uh, Geach, NYC, from New York City, says, uh, what did Jack learn at different stages that helped him move to the next level? Um, scales or, or techniques or things uh, like that. Yeah, I never learned many scales, but I mostly learned from chord voicings and learning songs. Um, like in the key of G, um, I try to see how many different G chords mm -hmm. you got, you know, major sevens, thirteens, and nines. And then it starts repeating. Mm -hmm. And then, so as you look at that, I would say, wow, well those notes go together and these do. And I started seeing all these different little shapes and you can play out of them with your solo mm -hmm. you know. and that's a nice melody just yeah. doing that but if you start mixing it up as i started seeing all these um shapes and everything i started seeing that Wait a minute, that's all of the notes, so I can play any note. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, which is... If you relate it back to where you're, where you're right, at. Right, yeah, yeah. Almost, yeah. So, but you have all that available to try to create your melodies and riffs. And, uh, of course, we all have favorite licks that we play. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, based out of the blues scale and the mm -hmm. pentatonic. Yeah. But, but 
it sounds it's like... mainly just major, minor, and then you got your dominant, mm -hmm. you know, which has the diminished and all that. Right. So, and then all your relatives, mm -hmm. you know, which, I mean, it's like endless, the combinations, <laughs> you know, because, <laughs> you know, if you're in G and you got B minor and E minor and A minor and D, right. you know, one, six, two, five. Yeah. And the three minor. I mean that they all have common notes. Now you, know. you didn't have any formal music training that I know of, did you? No. Take lessons or anything there, like that. There or? wasn't anybody. My brother showed me what he had, and you know, guys in school, we would show each other something. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I ain't showing you that. That's my new lick. I ain't showing it to you. But I. We didn't have uh, YouTube back then, you know. I'd, yeah. I'd watch TV, and if I saw somebody playing guitar, I would look at it, try to memorize it, and I'd run to my bedroom and pick up my guitar and try to see where he was putting his fingers yeah. and try to learn that way. Uh, of course, I'm too lazy to do that with YouTube now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, the, the actually, tools available now yeah. are just crazy I mean, with I, all that. I watch all kind of stuff on YouTube, you know, Oscar Peterson and all those guys, and I try to learn some of that stuff so yes. I'm still trying to learn and piece it all together but for me it was always chord voices mm -hmm. and uh, like when I learned that G7 if you play the five minor of that on top of the G7 and that's a D minor seventh right you can play a D minor seventh over a G7 right and they kind of there's so many notes are similar that yeah. it works between them it's kind of like a G9 mm -hmm. Just yeah. one note different. Yeah. This is almost what we were talking exactly what we were talking about last week when I was talking about uh, soloing and different combinations that you can do with chords uh, in between that. We, one of the things that we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Nacogdoches Bob from Nacogdoches, Texas, my home state. Uh, what guitar is Jack playing? This is a. <laughs> <laughs> this was made for me in Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> and, de and deliver it through a pawn shop. <laughs> now it's a Fender Squire. It's um, it's actually really nice. It's got flame maple in the neck, mm -hmm. and it's the 20th anniversary Squire, made by Fender. Yeah. And stock uh, pickups. Everything's stock up. I've had to replace the volume pod and the output jack, and these tone controls are on their way out too. So yeah, I'll be replacing them. And I've and, seen uh, you play all kinds of pickups. guitars over the. Here's that we've been working together. You've played yeah. your 336. Three, yeah, 336. Uh, uh, GNLs. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody makes great guitars. Mm -hmm. I, I found this, and I just love the way the neck feels. Yeah. It just fits in my hand really yeah. good. And uh, it vibrates. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if they can hear that, but it vibrates good, and it just feels good. You know. Um. Uh, Jack is rather a, a minimalist in gear, <laughs> to say it to say it easily. Well, so, people ask me, why are you playing that thing? It's like I like it. That's right. You know, I mean, um, yeah, that's right. So. Um, here, I've got this uh, nice pedal board filled with all kinds of things I've acquired over the years, and Jack. I, uh, I can tell you exactly what Jack's got down here. We've got a <laughs> regular chromatic tuner, yeah, uh, regular boss tuner, a, a TS-7, uh, or is that yeah. an 808? No, it's a 9. TS-9, TS-9. Uh, it's, it's a new tube screamer. Two, it's a new, it's a year or two old. Yeah, uh, and then plugged into the MXR uh, modified overdrive, which we'll talk about a little bit later, Yeah. and going right into your amp. Yeah. So not I mean, I have other effects at home. I got a great wah wah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that Dunlop makes. And uh, uh, man, I should have brought it. It's got extra features and functions. And mm. um, and then you play. What type of amp you're playing through today? This is a Fender Blues Junior. Fender Blues Junior. It's just stock. It hadn't been modified. Yep. Um, I've got several different kind of amps. Yeah. You know. Um, I have, you know, delays and phase shifters and stuff, but I just don't have a pedal board. Yeah. I, I keep saying one of my dreams is to have a pedal board <laughs> <laughs> someday. That's all right. <laughs> one of my dreams is to play like Jack Pearson, so <laughs> I'll trade you my pedal board. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, 
All right, uh, L Black Seven is asking, what amp do you recommend for low volume blues for just practice at home? Oh uh, well, something like this your is one good. That you got there, yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's got a master volume, so you know it's just barely on. You know it's on two, and the regular volume's on three or something. We'll try and get a picture of this before we uh, before we go before Jack packs it up, and I'll try and put it on our. I have our, an old black face champ. Yeah. That I use a lot at the house, and you know it's just a. I know Will McFarland came in. He had a little Princeton. Well, yeah. I used that champ the first thing we did yeah. here. Yeah, sounded uh, sound yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. But, you know, I've had big amps. I had a great 50-watt Marshall head that would just peel the paint off of the walls, but I can still hear it ringing in my <laughs> ears, you know. So, <laughs> but I got rid of that a long time ago. But Yes. I've gone through, I don't know, dozens of amps. I don't know how many. No. Um, but if you got to get the sound acoustically, you know, I... Most of my practicing all my life has been without an amp, either in a hotel room mm -hmm. or just sitting around the house playing my electric guitar, not plugged in. Because mm -hmm. if I can, if I can get the vibrato and the, if I can make it sing like that when I plug it up, it's going to do any even more. That's right. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about your technique for that. Um, I know in the last live lesson you had talked about. Uh, sustaining a note mm -hmm. just like you were talking about there sustaining a note by really just moving your finger on the on the fretboard and just keeping that kind of massage in that note yeah and being able to keep this, it going can, is that loud enough it's still ringing it's still going and the only it's thing still going but you can't hear it because it's such a low level but I'm making it ring that long with my finger against the fret. Just, just r rubbing that f uh, fret but, a little bit on the string. But without rubbing it, it'll last this long. So that's pretty good sustain. It's yeah. still going, but by rubbing it on the fret, I can make it go a little bit longer. Yeah. But it's finger control. But it's also not playing the string so hard. Yeah. Because if I play the string real hard, it'll die off quick. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because the attack is so loud. Actually, it's still sustaining. Yeah. Because I'm moving it a little bit. Yeah. But you, when the attack is that loud, that's what the listener hears. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a trick. It's a, it's a technique of controlling the note with your hands. You do. You probably have the lightest touch of any any one that we've we've had on the show, and. Uh, and yet you're still able to play aggressive and, and sound incredibly uh, yeah, I get a pretty strong good, in your sound. Well, yeah. And, That's but, the thing about playing and not overplaying the string. You can mm -hmm. get more volume. When I play acoustic, mm -hmm. I mean, I get a lot of volume, but I'm not playing as hard as some of the guys do. Yeah. And when I play hard, it ties me up. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, what are some other... I don't know, dexterity or finger exercises or things that guys can do to, to give their fingers a bit more dexterity on the neck? Um, well, there's, you know, the regular finger exercises where you do one finger per fret. Mm -hmm. And then you go backwards. I still work on this. You know, I, mm -hmm. was, I was shown this when I was uh, just starting out, and mm -hmm. I still do it. And uh, this where you put all fingers on one string mm -hmm. and then move your first finger up. Have yeah. you seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so hard to do because I'm used to having my fingers up. Uh, but it takes more control to keep them on one string and keep them all down, and especially when you... I mean, that took a lot of concentration just to keep well, these down and move my second finger right I, uh Somebody, I thought it may have even been you, uh, uh, was because I I do that exercise. You and, do, and they were doing um, like moving then one and three, right, and then moving two and four s to the string beyond that, right, and one and three. It's it's tricky. It's really hard. It is very tricky because to do I'm that. used to moving them around like this, you know. Mm -hmm. But it does help, and uh, I mean that's an old exercise, yeah, I guess, because yeah. I remember seeing 
seeing it in an instructional thing yeah. in the mid 80s. Yeah. Um, but, you know, mostly just practicing my chords. But I'll, I'll play the major scale. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. backstab it. And I'll do that. Sometimes I'll start in G, I'll go up to D and go back down. And yeah. If I can get through all of that without <clears throat> messing up, I feel like I've done something. Yeah. But it's not playing music. Yeah. yeah. That's not playing music. That's just doing push-ups. Doing push-ups, keeping your yeah. keeping your dexterity out. And I do hand exercises where you hold your hand out and you bring one finger down. Okay. Try to keep your wrist straight. Jay would do that facing forward so the camera okay. can see you there. And then... Right. So that helps. And then do combinations. Oh, one gosh, and three, one hard. and, you know. Yeah second and the fourth one that's tough yeah but i've been doing this for a few years because i um, i've had a lot of hand problems through the years well talk to that we had one of the questions coming up late later on uh i forget who was asking it was talking about your your limited mobility wrestling with mobility issues with yeah. your ability to bend your wrist right that's um, it right there uh, so that's like as that far as you can kid. so you can't no i can't bend your wrist uh -uh. Like that. And like the classical players, they'll get up under. I can't do that, mm -hmm. you know, without a lot of pain. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of, I don't know, but it's made me readjust my fingering. Mm -hmm. So instead, you know, I can't get around to do this. Yeah. Uh, not very, not for long. Yeah, so yeah. I'll do it like this. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's create. Uh, it made me come up with a different way of playing. Mm -hmm. I think last time we talked about the Chuck Berry lick. Yeah. You know, where you, you know, I can't reach up there because I can't yeah. get my wrist up under there, so I skip a string. So I'm going, but I'm getting the sixth up mm -hmm. by skipping a string instead of going up here. Yeah. Now, um, you also do so much great slide work. Let's talk a little bit about your slide uh, technique. Can you play us a little something with slide if you've got that yeah. handy? I use a just a little glass slide on my third finger. Mm -hmm. And one of my deals is I don't put it past that knuckle. Because mm -hmm. when I do that, I have to bend my wrist more. So just let it go up down to there. Mm -hmm. And that way, when my hand's here, it just goes on and it's right there in position. Right, right, right. So that's, you know, play, logical to me. Play us a little something on with slide. Oops. so much muting is going on on your hand. Yeah. Un unlike some other slide players, Jack's not Jack's guitar is in standard tuning. Yeah. I use with open action tuning. that's not not any higher than No, it's normal. Normal action. Yeah. Uh, um, but I guess your touch is just so light that it doesn't Yeah, I, I don't push down much on the slide. I just let it float. Mm -hmm. And that's another way to get sustained with the slide. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to let the string keep vibrating. Mhm. Mm Yeah. It's still going and without compression or anything. I'm so I'm doing the same thing with the slide as I do with my finger. Yeah. yeah. And uh, 
And talk a little bit about your, your right hand muting that you're doing down there as as you're playing slide on a particular string, yeah, muting the other I'm strings. I'm covering out. the other strings that I'm not playing, like uh, that was in B flat, so playing this B flat on the B string. Mm -hmm. My thumb is covering these strings, mm -hmm. and this finger's covering there. And when I move up, my hand is adjusting. So, so you're I'm playing, playing without a pick. You're not using it. Your right, pick is just yeah. tucked in between your fingers. Every once in a while, I'll use a pick. <laughs> but it's usually for like a, I don't know, certain style. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I usually, I'd put the pick between these two fingers and play with my fingers. Mm -hmm. um, let, let's go to A. It might make more sense. So I'm using the same chord progressions, you mm -hmm. know, like if uh, A, one, six, two, five, then two. I'll do that if you're just playing an A. Mm -hmm. If you're playing an A chord, I'm playing those things on top of that. Underneath that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So it's with that. I use other tunings, but, you know, I only had one guitar when I was growing up, so, mm -hmm. and so I learned how to play in standard. Yeah. Um, because you didn't have time to retune, and we didn't have get. Well, I still don't have a guitar tech <laughs> <laughs> to hand me a guitar in different tunings for each song. You know. So. Uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's let's see. We got another question here. Ellis James is, says that uh, Warren Haynes said the that the oh Almond Brothers band, I guess what that was, uses alternate tunings and special things to get their unique sound. Uh, Jack, what would one of those be? Well, Dwayne Allman, he used standard tuning for songs like Dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just standard tuning and Mountain Jam. Uh, but the Statesboro Blues and Trouble No More and things like that, he tuned to open E. Explain open E tuning open e for the guys. Is, uh, and gals, sorry about yeah. that. It'd be like this. Mm -hmm. Right? So you tune the guitar open so it has these notes. G goes up to G sharp. Mm -hmm. So if he plays an E chord, that's what this is. Yeah. Like um, on the weight with he played with Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. It was in B flat. So that's that sound, and he yeah. used a strat, you know, mostly in Muscle Shoals. Yeah. And then he got that gold top. Yeah. Later on. But uh, I think a lot of that it sounds like a strat to me. So that's all out of that box, and it's kind of like harmonica licks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> out of that pattern, you know, there's a D. Now, are you also kind of muting with these fingers behind the, 
behind the... Not really. Or is I it mean, just they, stabilizing? They touch a every once in a while. You can change the sound by doing that. That's no muting. But it's so subtle and through an amp, yeah. you can't tell a whole lot. But I like the sounds behind the slide. There's overtones that happen behind oh, yeah, the yeah. slide that, um, especially if you're... On acoustic, you probably catch that a whole lot more. Yeah, and unplugged. And yeah. But I'm not really doing it you know, for an effect or anything, it's just yeah. kind of happening. Ah, uh, beautiful, beautiful. And there's open G. Lowell George, he used open A, so he would tune the guitar up to that. So you're just tuning to an A chord. Yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. While, while Jack's getting set up, um, uh, Tracy Stevenson is asking, has Jack uh, disabled or blocked the tremolo on your Strat, your Squire, to get uh, to help us sustain? Do you ever use the tremolo bar? It's movable. It, it still has the springs on it. Uh, I don't use the tremolo much. I mean, it, it'll move, but I got it cranked up where it yeah, doesn't move much. Very but, tight. But it will move if you uh, put a screwdriver in there. <laughs> <laughs> Or, you know, the vibrato bar. So. Fantastic. Uh, while Jack's getting uh, but, tuned you up. You know, some, my g I have it blocked up. Yeah. Where it won't move at all. But I don't know if it helps sustain or not. I actually like the sound of the springs. Um, I mean, I can hear them in the back of the guitar. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it comes through the... Uh, pickups or not but yeah um, that rattle that. There, yeah there's something about it I'm gonna add a little reverb or something now are you back in standard tuning or you're I'm working on it okay <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh, Jack is doing that um, don't you get that back you, you also are able to do so much uh, jazz sort of playing even just like you're doing there um, by just switching the sound up and the technique that you're playing yeah, that's why I like so much about a Strat is all the different pickup combinations. And uh, I rewire the tone control of this tone. I take it off of the middle and put it on the travel pickup. Oh, the okay. Bridge. So, but when you know. Been doing that for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It just it doesn't make sense not to have a tone control on the bridge pickup, yeah, so I always that, reverse it. Yeah. And uh, with the you can do a lot just with the tone. So you just back the tone off a little bit there, playing on the neck pickup with the tone back off a little bit. Yeah, it gets a good jazz sound. Yeah, it plays a little simple. fingers I alternate between the pick my fingers and just my thumb mm -hmm. and I, I, I got a big callus right here on the side of my thumb <laughs> um, and I practice doing up and down strokes with it I use my first and little finger, yep. and I skip a string. And I'm not playing very hard that way when I, yeah. you know, I just do a back and forth. It's mm -hmm. still as loud as the picking note. Yeah.
beautiful. So it's you know, uh, let's part of just manipulating the tone. Yeah, that you get, and um, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll let uh, Jack uh, take a breath for a second, and uh, we'll do a little bit of uh, business. I see we got a couple more questions. We'll do. We'll catch some more questions here in just a second. Um, one of the things that Jack did with us was our Learn a Master Blues guitar course, which is one of the courses that we're featuring this month. Um, uh, I'm teaching basic blues concepts. We talk about form and different things about style. Uh, Jack is one of our great interviews, and, and Jack talks about slide technique. He mm -hmm. did mostly slide technique in that interview. Okay. And, uh, and then we have uh, Johnny Highland as well. So if you're interested in learning about blues, if you're interested in, in just getting some basic uh, blues uh, instruction in our in our good way, which is just systematic building block instruction, and check out the Learn a Master Blues guitar course uh, that we've got going on uh, this month. We our newsletter came out uh, this morning, and so hopefully, if you're on our newsletter list, you've got that. And part of our newsletter list, we give resources, and this is sort of a blues month. I, I declared it so. Uh, we're going to make it a blues month, so we're featuring the blues course, and in our resources sale, we're featuring a couple things. Um, we're featuring uh, Rick Vito's um, slide. He's got a, in, a, a DVD, instructional DVD, talking about his slide technique. If you remember Rick Vito from two weeks ago, um, so I put that one on our resources sale, and then we also put uh, Jack's CD, most recent CD, although it's been a here, a couple years. When did you do this CD? The uh, oh, do what's right one. It's been a while. Um, we put this uh, this CD, and Jack has graciously offered to autograph. He's already autographed one, every one of them. So his hand is aching already <laughs> from autographing this. So any, all that to say, if you're interested in learning blues, I can't think of better uh, person to learn from than Jack and. Uh, Rick Vito and his slide technique. Check those resources out. There's a blue button underneath your Ustream window uh, that says uh, monthly specials. That'll take you right to that and you could get uh, Rick Vito's DVD and get this autograph CD by Jack and a blues course, whatever you want. Um, and then Jack, you have uh, your website as well. JackPearson.com. Yeah, Jack and uh, tell us all about that I know that's that's recently been revamped and you've got yeah. a lot of good things happening over yeah, there. Yeah, we've got the four CDs on there for sale and and downloads, and uh, I don't know, it's pretty elaborate. I need yeah. to go through and look at it all again. But we're, we're it's set up where I can release a bunch of unreleased tracks I've got. Yeah, I've got just so many through the years, and I've decided I'm going to release them on there as MP3s. Good instead of trying to press them all up in packages, you know. Good, good. Um, so. Well, and I know you've been playing a lot lately. I just see you around town all the time. Uh, I think the last thing you were at, you were you and saw a video of you and Tommy Emanuel at yeah, yeah. down to 3rd and Lindsley, I think it yeah. was. Uh, we have a good a time. We're, anytime he's in town, sometimes he'll call and we'll get together and we're like little kids. We're just <laughs> <laughs> John Knowles said, uh, we went by Cotton Music to see their new store and yeah. and it felt like a tornado blew through there when we left. <laughs> but John said it was like the circus came to town because, yeah. I don't know, we just laugh and carry on and play. And, Good. and uh, He found out I was playing, so I said, well, come bring your guitar and play. So he did. He, he hadn't played electric in a long time, he said, but he brought yeah. his telly out and we played. Yeah. Uh, he played about half of the night. <laughs> yeah. It was great stuff. Yeah. I watched some of that. It was great. Great videos yeah, on that. we have fun. Um, all right, well, let's give away something. We're going to give away uh, one of Jack's CDs. Um, That's my first one. This is your first CD. Yeah. We'll get Jack to autograph this. Can you tell us anything about this? Other than it was your first one. What? You recorded yeah. that here in town? Hmm? You recorded that here in town, I I'm sure? It. Yeah, I did it at home. Yeah, yeah. That was back in 19, I think I recorded it, most of it in 93. It came out in 94. Yeah. And uh, it's got a picture of the car I got my driver's license in. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody's about went ready to win this uh, this CD of Jack's. Uh, the winner of this is 
Eddie Beach 68. Eddie Beach 68. Congratulations, you have just won the CD. We'll get Jack to autograph that before he goes. And uh, wonderful. Uh, what you need to do, Eddie, is uh, email us at service at LegacyLearningSystems.com or LegacyInstruction.com, too. We could switch that over. Uh, service at LegacyInstruction.com. And uh, that will uh, just email us there and uh, give us your information, your phone number and address and stuff, and we'll, we'll get that out to you. So, uh, wonderful. Congratulations. Congratulations. Are you doing uh, the pedal now? Uh, we'll do the pedal in a minute. Okay. In a little bit. I want to uh, say something about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can you play us something? Can you play us a tune? Yeah? You want me to play acoustic? Yeah, yeah, play the, play the, play the national a little bit. Tell us about this. What is this monster? <laughs> this is old beat-up 1932 uh, national duo in. Yeah. And it was, it was red when I got it. Somebody painted it. It's not the original color. The original is silver like this. Yeah. Which, I don't know. You can't really tell this maybe from the camera angle. This is metal. Yeah. That's metal. Uh, you can see where it's come off. You got, it has a wood neck. Yeah. And uh, so it's all metal, and it has a resonator in here, like mm -hmm. a dobro. Yeah. What are you gonna play for us? What tuning is that in? That sounds like a D, low D tune. This is D. Yeah. So it's like that E tuning, but a, half, a whole step down. Yeah. I don't know if that's standard pitch. But <laughs> Started giggling because I hit that harmonic. <laughs> that, was pretty, that was pretty sweet. You got, a, you got the, the slide and everything on that, and you just ripped that harmonic out in the middle. <laughs> Sometimes it comes out. Uh, that, was, that was pretty sweet. But it's the same technique. You know, I'm muting with my right hand, but I'm trying to keep the bass going, yeah. which is a basic, you know, that's like. Chet Atkins, yeah. uh, Blind Willie Johnson, he was really famous for keeping his thumb going. <laughs> kind of a stride piano type yeah, of yeah. thing. So, yeah. you know, back in the 20s and 30s, Blind Blake, all them guys did mm -hmm. that. Reverend Gary Davis. Reverend Gary Davis, yeah. that's right. But, um, but this is done on this open tuning. <laughs> It's a unique sound, that national. It's, it, it's yeah. a, a very sweet, uh, old-time blues sound. Yeah. I I wanted one for most of my life and then ran across this in the mid-90s. Really? So I just got it back then and um, feel very blessed to be able to play this guitar. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a quick break for uh, a second, let uh, Jack catch his breath, and we will be uh, <laughs> back in about 60 seconds.
Legacy Learning Systems Learn and Master line of courses features an exclusive multimodal learning process to build skills from the ground up. By utilizing four modes of learning, reading, listening, watching, and doing, even a complete beginner can follow this easy to use program of self-directed study. Building confidence and skills, our system allows the learner to progress through intermediate and advanced levels to full mastery. Each course contains between 12 and 22 DVDs of visual instruction, a full printed workbook, access to our online support community, as well as three to five audio CDs in our music courses, which include fully produced jam along tracks. Learn in the privacy of your own home, at your own pace with the Learn and Master family of courses. Bring your dream within reach. Furthering your education, Legacy Learning Systems offers a unique resource to all students, the Learn and Master Online Community. Here you can communicate with fellow students and course instructors and immerse yourself into an interactive community where knowledge, fun facts and experiences are shared. Signing up is easy. Take your learning to the next level, the Learn and Master Online Community, your place for serious instruction. All right, well, thanks for sticking around. You can't play that. You don't play that note in that chord. Well, I, I think you're completely wrong, Jack. Well, I, I think, think you're wrong. I think slide is of the devil. <laughs> and you can, nobody can play that. <laughs> um, we're just sorry, we're just having some fun. Having some fun. Uh, we're talking about what can you play over uh, one chord in the blues. That's right. We uh, had so a lot of we questions. We should about argue about it. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody's got different theories, you know. Um, when you're well, let's talk about that. When you're when you're playing a blues solo and you're over, a, you know, there's three chords involved. You got one, four, and five. What's going on in your head as you're coming between those different tonalities? Are there different options that that are coming available to you as you're you're thinking major with one, you're thinking minor in another? What do you? It well. If you're John Lee Hooker, you're still play, thinking about the one. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, I watched John Lee Hooker. Yeah. And it was, uh, I guess, from the 60s. And he didn't do nothing but play this. <laughs> now, Otis Spann, he, Muddy Waters' band was backing him up. And it was Otis Spann and them. They were doing all the changes. John never played nothing but this. <laughs> he might have went to the B chord once, but it sounded great, you know. But uh, the whole deal about playing... Like for a beginning blues player, just a right. basic rock right. bottom blues well, player trying to, trying to find his way. What's a good basic key? Is it A or E? Well, let's, or... let's say we're doing something in A. Let's kind of an put a, it in the middle okay. of the neck. So we're doing something in A. Okay, you got this B.B. Uh, King plays around in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so you, you have home bass, like which is your A, and you're noodling kind of, around there. It's kind of like the D chord, mm -hmm. and it's a combination of that chord, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that gives you that major sound. Yeah. If you go up here, it gives it more of a minor kind of sound. Right. But you can play out of this position over all of the chord changes, mm -hmm. and it works. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was saying earlier about there's so many common notes, mm -hmm. you know. You just don't want to play, if it's a D, D minor, mm -hmm. what's the note we're supposed to avoid? The major yeah. third, you know. Yeah. You want to kind of avoid that note. Now, when you're on that, let's go back but to A. But a basic blues, yeah. yeah. You got the blues scale here. It's basically just these notes, mm -hmm. the flat seven, mm -hmm. and it repeats. Mm -hmm. But that covers the whole neck. Yeah. You know, and that shows you all of these bases that I was talking about before. And then how does that adjust if you're thinking in that form? Well, I play an E chord. Mm -hmm. 
Basically, I can hear. But I'm still playing. You're still out playing out of that that A blues form. A. But I'm, I'm by bouncing back between this position and that position. I'm outlining the D chord yeah. better. of the really famous guys had their signature licks yeah, yeah so i've tried to learn all of their signature licks and then it comes out a different way you know yeah. by the melody i'm trying to play but uh it's really cool to go back and like this that's more like a grant green thing mm -hmm. you know it's not even bending notes but it's yeah, it's just slurs. Around. Yeah. So I guess the main thing is learn this blue scale and this, is that pentatonic? Yeah, pentatonic with an added blues note. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. when I was a kid, if you played here, right, that had more of a, a little bit meaner, yeah. a little more sad, mm -hmm. a little, you know, different attitude, and then and when, if you went up here, it was sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. So I blend the two together. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, Sapphire 21 is asking, what's the difference between a resonator guitar and a dobro? Well, they both I have they both there. have the resonator cone inside. It looks like a speaker cone but the bridge is attached to it, mm -hmm. and the dobro has a different system. It has a, a different flat, kind of bridge. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's still a cone, but the bridge is attached in a different way. Oh, okay. This is a wooden disc that's bolted to the cone, mm -hmm. and the dobro has like a spider web looking metal piece that the bridge attaches to the cone. Yeah. So it's... Yeah. One of them is pulling on the cone, the other one is pushing down. Yeah. I think they were brothers and they got in an argument about it. <laughs> <laughs> of a which way was best. I think so, and, and, and they split into two different companies. I remember reading that, I don't know. I'll have um, to look it up. While you've got your electric here, let's talk about uh, your distortion pedal. Uh, I was talking with Jack uh, as we were getting ready for this lesson. Uh, what's, an, what's something that we could give away that would be a great uh option and he said that one of the pedals that you're falling in love with is this mxr uh, modified overdrive tell us about this well i like it i don't know if i love it no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no i found out about this uh brian at dunlop turned me on to this pedal and it i don't know how new it is but it was new to me mm -hmm. it looks like brass it's uh it's got a lot of output i usually keep the output way down here you know 8 30 or not even nine o'clock and it's got this bump switch which uh, gives you an, a, like a, a boost boost on the and lows and mids according I think to their so yeah their paperwork so you've got 
this tone control here, and then you got the gain, and then this is, what does it say, 100 hertz? That's at 100, 100 hertz, so you, you can, can boost it or cut you, it. You can cut it or boost it, but then when you push this, it does even more. Oh, okay. Yeah, so even without this bump switch, it still does something, I think. Hmm. Let me try. Yeah, yeah, play a little bit um, with us. Yeah, see? Yeah. So it's still doing it. Whether it's uh, Bing. but uh, it's got a a nice, it's not a real buzzy sound, which is what I like. I yeah. mean, you can get a different kinds of distortion out of it mm -hmm. by how you're setting it. Yeah. And uh, I've got most of them are at like twelve thirty or one o'clock. Um, and then play show show us a little bit with it, like play a little bit without it, and then maybe kick it in or something. Okay. So you can kind of hear the difference. This is without it. And this is with it. folks over at uh, Jim Dunlop uh, who are now I think MXR is now a division of I Dunlop. guess so yeah because uh, Dunlop's got them and uh, I, I uh, just sent an email over there and uh, Max from the good folks over Dunlop uh, said sure we'll send one out so uh, one of you lucky folks is about to win Jack's new pedal uh, the uh, modified overdrive MXR. It works good with other overdrives too. Yeah, it's, it's friendly. Um, you know, I'll, I'll use that by itself or another one by itself, and then the combination of two. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will have three. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just amazing. Yeah, all the different tones you can get. Uh, the winner of this one. You guys excited? This is a this is a a good giveaway. We're giving yeah. away some good stuff. <laughs> um, the winner of this is J trioxide J trioxide J T R I O X I D E J trioxide you have just won this modified overdrive jack maybe we can even get you to autograph this before before we go uh, that's always fun uh, congratulations It'd be fun figuring out where to write on it yeah maybe on the <laughs> side or something yeah, um, yeah. but you haven't won anything JT or J Troxide until you email us at service at learning, uh, legacy learning systems or legacy instruction.com. Fabian, you can put up that link. Uh, so let me encourage you to do that. Don't let this great, if you don't win, if you don't claim it, I'm going to give it away. I swear I'm going to give it away next week to somebody else. <laughs> so you got to claim it. Um, so congratulations. That's a great pedal. And we thank the good folks over at Dunlop for uh, yes. giving us that pedal. Thank you. Um, all right, we are just about out of time. Let me um, get to one more question here. Alec Bourne is asking, will a Les Paul do similar effects uh, like that by adjusting the tone and volume, I assume like you were doing earlier, uh, better to use as humbuckers? Does that work better as with humbuckers or single coils to get a jazzy sound? Oh, you can do it with either, yeah. Any either guitar one. that's got a tone control and you know, where you can mix and match a yeah. 335 or an arch top or, a, you know, Ed Bickard played a lot of jazz on a Telecaster, you yeah. know, and, uh, you know, some people have put a humbucker in the, mm -hmm. a guitar too, but I like single coils and humbuckers. They have a, their own sound. Each has, each has their own sound yeah. um, and their own advantages, and you can fake it or you can get by a lot with it by just playing with your tone knob. You know, a yeah. lot of guys just don't ever touch their tone knob. And they never 
and you have to use your volume control too because that a- a- affects the tone right yeah you know, some guys just turn it on and leave it on and that's it but yeah you get, oh, it's really interactive yeah you can get a lot of nuance out of your playing out of your guitar you can get a lot of sounds out of your guitar that uh, many players i don't know if most but many players just kind of have their pickup always in one setting and have their tone and their volume all in one setting and they just never change it and they wonder why their guitar sounds the same all the time Mm -hmm. well you can get use your pickups use your volume back that volume off that changes the character of the tone just a little bit have it full out that changes the character of the tone a little bit and it affects your distortion too it it affects the power of your distortion how much is being distorted Mm -hmm. Uh, how much is that sound cracking up uh as it as it is starting to to get distorted play around with your tone knob Back that tone off, you get a rounder sound. If you get the tone full out, you're going to get a, a, a little bit of a more of an edgier sound. So just kind of understand how they all affect each other. You'll be amazed the sounds you can get out of one instrument by just being able to yeah. adjust some yeah. of the different things. It's a lot of fun, too. Yeah. You know, I, I like to tinker around and try different things. Yeah, in between different songs, you're getting different colors. Even different parts of songs, you're getting different colors. Yeah, I'm always moving knobs and switches and... Trying to get different textures yeah. and, and playing different places on the neck with the on the strings with the pick or without a pick. Attacking in different ways with the pick, without a pick, mm-hmm. using the thumb. Gosh, we've already covered so many of them already here. Yeah. Um, experiment with all of that. Experimenting is the best thing that you can do to learn. Probably no one taught you the different forms of that G7 as you went all the way up the neck on that. That probably came from you just sitting down with your guitar and figuring that out and just yeah, thinking about it. Yeah, and you th- I think about that stuff too, you know, and I, uh, I can see the fingerboard in my head mm-hmm. and early on, it, uh, you know, you just try to analyze the fingerings and stuff. You know, if you can think it and hear it in your head, then you can probably figure out how to play it on your instrument. Yeah. Part of your practice time, part of the time that you are actually sitting down and working with your guitar should be devoted. Just put the books away, put your learning materials away, and just sit there and try and think about your instrument. And develop your ear. Develop you know, your, it, yeah. it's, it develops your ear, it develops your, your creativity to where you're not forced to, oh my goodness, if I don't have something in front of me, I don't know what to play. No, turn it over and just let your ear start to guide where you're playing. Wonder, and, and let your mind kind of wonder about, well, how could I play that maybe in another another way? Is there another way that I could play the similar, you know, things up here and still get this? Oh, well, that's a, that's a different sound. It's a little bit thicker if I do it. Just let your mind think about these things. And Oh, this is cool. Look at this. Okay, you got a diminished chord. Mm-hmm. If you move it up a string, you got a nine chord mm-hmm. or a minor seven flat five, mm-hmm. you know. And same thing with uh, this. That'd be a G7. Okay, yeah. Move it up. It's a D major 9. Mm-hmm. But it's the same finger and just moving it on different strings, mm-hmm. you know. And so, I mean, that just, oh, it it does something when I hear that. Yeah. You know. It twists your ear a different yeah. way. And, and this fingering is a ninth chord, but if you move it up here, it's a 13th flat 9 just by playing it there. So simple things like that can really help. Uh, here's a seventh chord. Move it up a string. It's a diminished, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just love little simple things like that. Yeah. I'm just moving it up a string. Sometimes I'll play something on the wrong string by accident, but it'll make me play something different. Mm-hmm. So I try not to listen to it as a mistake. Yeah. Unless it's just a really bad clunker. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but try to be open to new things that you might stumble on by accident that's yeah. what i'm trying to say yeah oh yeah it makes it fun all right well we're on the home stretch we need to we need to take it on home here uh let's uh i want to talk to you about a couple of things coming up uh jack do you have any upcoming concerts coming up i got a couple of dates a couple in the things works, working but I, but yeah we haven't confirmed them if yet. you're ever in the nashville area uh check jackpearson.com and uh, jack has different uh, uh events he's playing playing all the time yeah i see you playing at the ryman i see you playing at tpac i see you playing at third and lindsay and just doing club things yeah it's uh 
In fact, he, here's how we met was a mutual friend, Dino Paston, who you would probably, oh, yeah. you may know, oh, you know, you know. Um, he was, took his son to a club and they were listening to some guitar player and they were getting ready to leave and you were just coming up and starting to play and he thought, who is that? And so he turned me on. He went to hear the wrong guy. <laughs> he said, who is that? So he sat and listened to the whole set. He did. He said, oh gosh, that's great. So I think he got your CD. He was telling me about it. You got to hear this guy. You got to check this guy out, Jack Pearson. And then we, I called you and we, we did the guitar conference together, get a, did a couple of those and then we've yeah. done several things over the years. Yeah. So it's been it, great. It's amazing how things work like that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, get out of here. Next week, uh, you got the week off. Uh, we will not be having live lesson next week. We we'll take the week off. The next can we thank John? Oh yeah, we're going to thank our producer John, who has uh, <laughs> stuck with us through all kinds of uh, audio uh, changing and and all kinds of stuff, and has been a great help to me uh, over these many months. Um, so the next live lesson we'll have will actually be at the end of the month, which I believe is like the 29th, and I think we're going to have an open talk for that. Um, our newsletter came out today. Fabian, maybe you can put up the newsletter um, uh, link. I have a video tip in there. Uh, I've been in the studio most of the week doing, uh, uh, oh, just a lot of acoustic playing, and I did a little tip there about how you can you have a chord. If you just move one note in that you can come up with all kinds of different things. If I just take off that. What if I do the second, the first finger? So there's a lot of creativity of just letting your ear guide you, but you can just put moving one note in a chord form. So we have a video tip talking about that yeah. and uh, some other stuff as well. Um, all right, next live lesson uh, is going to be the 26th I have here in my notes. We'll do an open talk, and I'll be talking about uh, different things. And we had some questions about overcoming stage fright. Do you ever get nervous when you're playing? Yeah, sometimes. No? Yeah. But um, my friend David Greer, he told me one time, he said, these people are here to see you do good, not do bad. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's cool, you know? That's right. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily happen. You know, you'd think, gosh, a larger event, you'd be more nervous. That's actually easier. It's for actually me. easier. Yeah, yeah, it's actually the opposite when yeah. you get. Uh, uh, it's funny. Different triggers for different things. So anyway, we'll talk a little bit about that stuff. Um, we put a bunch of lessons over at Gibson Skills House this week. Uh, so many different things. There's a lesson I did about the money chords in G. Really good chord forms that you can use when you're playing doing acoustic work in the key of G. Um, I have another style lesson about finger style runs. Uh, I do a finger flexibility workout, of which I stole one of Jack's exercises, uh, along with some others that Muriel Anderson gave me and some mm -hmm. other stuff. And one of the greatest workouts that we've done with Gibson has been that finger flexibility workout. It really helps. Um, we've got a new interview over there with Will McFarlane, our good friend Will McFarlane. Um, and a couple of the guys have done some other songs over there. Haven't, haven't Met You Yet, great song by Michael Bublé. And then Slow Ride by Foghat. One of the guys are teaching I remember that. playing that. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I do. It was a long time ago yeah. in a land far away in the 1970s. that I was at. I was at a Fog Hat concert when uh, Def Leppard was opening up for them. So that was a, <laughs> you know that was a long time ago, and uh, so that's my Fog Hat story there. But anyway, you can go to our Gibson Skills House lessons if you press the white button underneath the UStream window, and that'll get you to our Gibson Skills House lesson. Lots of great things over there. Um, Great. So that's all of that. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Max over at Jim Dunlop for uh, uh, donating the pedal and uh, for all this sort of stuff. We're going to give away one more thing. We're going to give away uh, another Jack Pearson CD. Um, let's give away. Let's give away this one. Um, oh, and I've got this one. A lot of good things on this one as well. Someone is about to win this. Mike in Colo, which I assume is Colorado. M-I-K-E-I-N-C-O-L-O. -E you have just won this. Uh, and Jack will get you to autograph that as well. Yeah, J-Mo played drums on half of this record, and mm -hmm. Jim Horn and uh, Paul Langosh, who played with Tony Bennett for a long time. He played a lot wow. of bass on it, and uh, a, lot of good, a lot of good players on it. Wow. Um, great. So our winners tonight were Eddie Beach 68. You won a CD, J-Trio Oxide. 
uh, you won uh, the great panel, and then Mike in Colorado, or Mike in Colo, you have won another CD as well. So uh, send us your information, and we'll, we'll get those out to you. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone. Don't leave yet. Jack's going to play us one thing, or we could play something together, or whatever. We yeah, let's play do. something. Uh, let's play a blues in C. A blues in C. All right. Like a swing. Okay. Thank you so much, Jack, for being here with us. God bless you. Have a great week.